Um, uh, last but certainly not least uh, of our topics, which is genomic medicine and pedi pediatric patients. And Halkin, are you ready to go? Yes, I'm, I'm good to go. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay, great. So, uh, uh, so this uh, presentation is sort of uh, 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 focused on obstacles, uh, but I am going to uh, sort of uh, address a few of the uh, successes as, as, as well. <clears throat> so uh, if, I, if I have next slide. And uh, th there are really three areas that I was going to focus on uh, sort of collectively for the uh, pediatric uh, uh, sites. Uh, review of current pediatric projects and, and, and largely focus there on phenotyping and sequencing. Uh, so uh, Kyle Brothers has worked on the consent form, but there is a separate session on that, so I wasn't going to go into that in any, any detail. And then talk about new approaches to analyzing existing data and prospective directions uh, where um, uh, uh, we felt that a inexpensive uh, a custom-based genotyping chip sort of focusing on functional uh, uh, variants or putative functional variants would be of, of interest. Next one. <clears throat> and go, go on. Uh, so, so this is uh, uh, just addressing some of the um, uh, algorithms that we have been uh, conducting across the pediatric sites at uh, uh, Boston, Cincinnati, and, and CHOP. And, uh, and uh, we have basically cross-validated several uh, uh, between pediatric sites and across pediatric and adult sites, and we validated adult al algorithms as well. I apologize for using CAC, this stands for the Center for Applied Genomics, but really should say CHOP there. Um, and uh, we still have a few that uh, are in development, but uh, uh, both atopic dermatitis and um, uh, and uh, ADHD have uh, have been validated sort of on, on, on our end. We have tested them on other sites and they were felt to exclude too many cases so, so we are sort of adjusting, adjusting the algorithm before we take it forward. Uh, next one. <clears throat> and uh, this is just a representative uh, 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 example of the asthma algorithm which uh, uh, we were quite conservative so uh, uh, we for example here have asthma diagnosis in our EPIC database with about 15,000 cases but we stricted it down to about 4,500 so that also impacts on the other side but these are really carefully confirmed and documented asthma cases and this is now under under analysis uh, as are many of the other um, uh, phenotype algorithms that I listed earlier. Next. And uh, on the adult side, I mean, uh, we have, uh, we have uh, 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 sort of done what we can to address some of the adult uh, phenotypes, but this is sort of one of the uh, obstacles that we, that we have. I mean, we are not, we don't have a lot for pediatric patients who have uh, deep uh, uh, thrombus uh, and or uh, diverticulosis or soster, I mean, for obvious reasons. Uh, so if you take a next slide, uh, uh, and for those obvious reasons, I mean, the pediatric numbers are obviously going to dwarf sort of in the context of the adult, several of the adult phenotypes. But on the other hand, many of the and multiple of the alg <laughs> algorithms we are taking forward in pediatrics, as I showed you, they are uh, they cross pediatric and adult uh, uh, fields, so we can we can obviously uh, address uh, phenotypes longitudinally from pediatric and, and, and up to old uh, uh, ages. Next one. Uh, so uh, so sort of as an obstacle uh, point in that setting um, is the fact that uh, many of the uh, adult algorithms, as, as as we said, they don't really apply well uh, in pediatrics and vice versa. When we look at developmental traits in pediatrics, language development, cognition, uh, or motor skills, I mean, there are not going to be uh, uh, big numbers from the adult uh, front uh, uh, to address that uh, uh, either. Uh, uh, but, you know, the goal here, of course, is to try to optimize um, uh, and bridge this uh, to the best we can. So next slide. And uh, the options that we have in that setting is to sort of, you know, proceed as we are doing on a case-by-case -case basis and, and not really necessarily worry about the fact that there are 
obviously going to be diseases that have no overlap, such as Alzheimer's disease and dementia and other things uh, in the adult front and, and, and the developmental phenotype, as I mentioned, in pediatrics. Uh, 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 but then, you know, what we have, though, accomplished is the sort of cross-validation of several of the phenotypes uh, algorithms that uh, we have come up with in pediatrics um, uh, and uh, validated in adult sites and vice versa. So that's actually very nice to nice to see. Uh, next slide. And uh, uh, as a part of the uh, sequencing program, I mean, obviously, some of the gene variants are, are uh, targeted there are uh, much more applicable towards the adult uh, diseases. Uh, we have now done preliminary analysis of the first uh, about 280 or so samples that were sequenced, uh, and we have another 140 uh, uh, going through, about half of them through. Uh, and uh, it's actually quite interesting that there's a lot of uh, novel variants absent in all databases that actually have come up from the panel. And uh, this is in the middle of an analysis, and we can talk about that uh, uh, in the meeting tomorrow or, or Friday. Next one. And uh, this uh, sort of is the focus on, on uh, uh, the approaches to analyze existing data, the new methods. Uh, next slide. And uh, uh, as I mentioned briefly earlier, uh, copy number variation is, is obviously another whole really domain that can be leveraged across all the sites. We all have um, uh, uh, SNP data where we can derive log ratio of the allele frequency. And, uh, and uh, we have an algorithm, uh, and, and you may also have an algorithm at, at other sites that we can we can work on optimizing, but, but and the same algorithm should be utilized across all the sites and then the data sort of meta-analyzed. Uh, another <coughs> another um, uh, sort of potential way of moving uh, forward is to impute uh, uh, loss of function variants and, uh, and uh, um, uh, drug gene interaction variants, and I'll show you an example of that. And then, of course, C uh, CMV analysis across uh, sequencing data. Uh, which uh, we have uh, developed uh, and many others uh, as well, is, is progressing nicely and sort of getting to the states of the, um, of the GVAS CNV analysis and picking up obviously much, much smaller CNVs than we could with the arrays. Now I mentioned here also the high sensitivity GVAS. Uh, this is really uh, an algorithm that was implemented in the R packets of, uh, of asset and sort of focuses on subset analysis, and uh, we have applied this, for example, across multiple different autoimmune diseases, and uh, we have uh, uh, enriched our genome-wide significant finding multi-multi-fold by using this algorithm. It, it really picks the, uh, 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 for each uh, SNP or for each locus, the most optimal disease model, uh, and, uh, and then it uh, uh, basically sort of um, uh, 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 from a common control analysis drives the most informative analysis uh, from, a, from a subset uh, standpoint. It's actually quite a quite power, uh, powerful way of, of uh, enriching for, for significance, and, and, and we could definitely leverage. And then there are various functional biological annotations that obviously can be applied to optimize um, uh, sort of uh, genome-wide marginally significant hits, etc. Gene-based association testing uh, obviously cuts down the, uh, the multiple testing issues and uh, various tissue-specific and cell-specific assays that can effectively be integrated into GVAS data uh, uh, are actually often very informative of pinpointing specific cells that uh, drive the sort of the uh, significant signals uh, across uh, related diseases, etc. And then, you know, pathway and protein interaction analysis have been mentioned before, so, uh, and here's some of the uh, newer tools that are used. Next one. And uh, for the copy number variants, I mean, obviously, <coughs> as we mentioned, these are, these, this is really an untapped uh, uh, resource within EMERS uh, across all the sites. And, uh, and with the 56,000 samples that sit genotyped, I mean, this could be very, very valuable uh, uh, approach. And, uh, and, and obviously, these variants are very common, even though the interest is more on the rare variant front, and that, that's really what the Illumina platform is optimized to pick up. Next one. 
and this is just sort of the schematic of the uh, of the different approaches depending on the uh, uh, array uh, platform or sequencing platform you have uh, and uh, is sort of uh, self-explanatory. That obviously the array data where you have both the allele frequency and the intensity data uh, in, in my view at least is, is better power than any of the other uh, methods that rely on intensity alone. Next one. So you're at 11 minutes now, so it would uh, be good to up, uh, wrap up. Okay. Uh, so the uh, opportunity exists here to, uh, to, uh, to basically, uh, uh, you know, genomize this across the sites and, and do, uh, do a meta-analysis. Next one. Uh, so the uh, pathogenicity and the, the database of DGV, which is the genome variation, I mean, this is obviously not optimal, and so we could do a much better job, I think, in the, in the network. Uh, next slide. Uh, by figuring out sort of, you know, the proper control and the proper way of, of doing this. Next one. Uh, and uh, this is just to sort of uh, demonstrate the example of the uh, 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 haplotype uh, imputation for the uh, TPMT. Next one. And uh, shows you can just roll these slides. These are the four variants that uh, we used to impute to, 87,000 samples. Next one. Uh, and, uh, and this shows that, you know, there is actually, you know, ethnic uh, uh, difference in the, in the prevalence of these variants. Uh, uh, homozygosity state is obviously much more rare, uh, but heterozygosity, which is still influential, is, is uh, uh, significant. Next one. And this summarizes the uh, data set uh, uh, in terms of the uh, individuals we picked out. And these are rare variants. So, so, uh, and if you take the, the next slide, which shows um, the um, sort of the uh, the accuracy uh, from the uh, variants that are typed, which is 99.8 percent to that of the uh, uh, imputation, and the Sanger sequenced actually a full plate of 90, 94 samples. Uh, next slide, uh, and you can see better the accuracy there that, you know, for the homozygous states, I mean, it's not perfect. There were a few individuals predicted to be heterozygous and one missed uh, from each of the uh, 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 standpoint. Next slide, I think we're coming to the end here. Uh, so the uh, uh, accuracy here of, of imputation is, uh, is, is obviously uh, not perfect, but still you capture the vast majority of the patient. Next slide. And for the, uh, for the prospective sort of direction, uh, next slide, uh, the, what we were going to propose was sort of this uh, uh, in, uh, uh, cost-effective, cost uh, inexpensive, uh, custom-based phenotyping, next slide. Uh, and, uh, and we have, you know, uh, done this for a couple of projects before, proposed it for a third project that may or may not uh, go, uh, next slide. Uh, and this is the sort of the uh, content of the organ uh, transplant uh, chip, uh, which is basically taking all uh, putative damaging variants, uh, all copy number variants, GMAS loci, and sort of content that is uh, available from the public domain and other, other uh, sites where we could access data, and typing across 25 to 30,000 samples. Next slide. And so this uh, would be sort of the proposal for a future EMERS chip in that setting, which is obviously allow us to integrate um, uh, uh, the, uh, uh, you know, every single samples by typing them on the same chip with uh, informative content uh, of data set that sort of can go as low as 0.1% uh, frequency as was uh, discussed before. And the last slide. Uh, sort of again, just uh, sort of allows for this sort of coordinated effort to uh, to take place. So I'm, I'll stop here. Thanks.